Hey, this is Ed Bauman, edited for TV. Going to show you a new design I have for creating subgroups in Record. I've already preloaded a song here that I did many, many years ago. I'm going to use that as a demo. So what I've got down here is I've got all my drums, snare, cymbals, this pulse, beat one, beat two, shuffle beat, African drum. These are all just Dr. Rex devices. And then the synths start over here. I've got some guitar stuff, some bass, thunder, this message. These are all separate tracks. So if we take a look at the rack, I've separated things here as well just so it's easier for me to flow through this and understand. Uh, this song is way far away from being done. I've transferred it over from Reason, and I need to do some things to get it up and running again. But good enough for this demo. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the traditional method of creating a subgroup in Reason, which I think I've seen quite a few people do. It works, but it's got some limitations. So what you do here on the master section, we're going to create a mix channel. And this mix channel, we will open it up. And down here, we're going to create a mixer. This is a standard 14-2 mixer that we all know from Reason as well. Flip the rack around, and every device that you want to subgroup, you're going to plug into this mixer. So we'll start with the drums, take the direct outs. And we're going to go into channel 1, left and right in. Then channel 2 is going to go to the next device. Channel 3 will go to the next one. Channel 4 goes to the next one. These are all the drums that I've used in this song. I've got them all in this first rack row. Channel 5 is going to be the next. Channel 6 is going to be this next Dr. Rex here. Channel 7 will be the next one. And these are going to be all the drums are going to be subgrouped into this one mix channel. And the eighth one is going to be right here. All right, so flip the rack back around, go back to the top. We can fold this up. Actually, let's leave it open if we want to come back and look at it again. So if we go back to the mixer, all these drums from this strip to this strip, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, are now mixed into this one mix channel. And we can go ahead and rename this subgroup so it's easier to understand. Actually, let's call it Drums Subgroup. And so now if we play this song... I'm going to dim that down so I can talk over it. You notice all these sends, I've set this up. I don't normally do this for the song, but for the demo, I've got all these drums going to the FX Send 1, which is just a plain old RB7000 reverb. Now you can see the levels moving here. And they're all coming into this subgroup, and that's where we're actually hearing them is that in that subgroup. So let me turn this back off, back up, turn off the dim uh, 20 dB thing, and we're going to listen to the drums, and we're going to hear the subgroup. And watch what happens when I fade this drum subgroup fader. We can still hear the reverb. We can verify this right here. Effects return. That reverb is still receiving audio from all these drums coming back or being sent through these effects send knobs. Coming back over here and you can definitely see it's still there. So that's one of the limitations of doing this method is that you're still going to have effects in your mix. So, that's one way to do it. Now, let me go ahead and close this. Don't save. I'm going to reopen it. And now, we're going to do this new method. Uh, which, if we go to the rack, whoops, we go to the rack, we're here in the master section, we're going to create a mix channel, just like before. Except this time, I'm going to load in a patch that I've made and it's called Edit it for TV Subgroup Control. And here it is. And what it is, it's uh, sort of small and what's in there. It's got a spider audio, which is called Stop. Nothing's loaded up right now. We've got this Thor called Luke 1994. It's named after my oldest son. 
And um, below this door, we've got just a bunch of spider devices. Now what we're going to do is there's a series of things you need to do to get this set up. It's a little bit more involved than the other one, sort of, but ultimately it's not because you get much more control. First thing we're going to do is in the master section, we're going to tape we're going to take sub or effect send 8 and we're going to route that into the Luke 1994 audio input 1. Then we're going to take the audio output of Luke 1994 and we're going to route that to this input here of the mix channel. And we can go ahead and call this subgroup just like we did last time, drums subgroup. The next thing we're going to do is take CV out 4 and we're going to route that to the CV in of the drum subgroup. And the last thing we do is we take the mix device direct out, left, right, and run that into stop. Now all these steps are for specific reasons. Um, the um, audio output goes, uh, let's see, the audio input comes from send 8. I'll explain that in a bit. The audio output goes into this drum subgroup input. And what that's doing is it's sending a, if we look at the Thor here, button 1 are both going to audio out 2. Whoops. Button 1 is going to audio out 1 and audio out 2. That's going into this drum subgroup. Button 1 has no audio, of course, but what it's doing is it's sending a specific CV signal, basically uh, DC. And we can verify that on the channel strip. It's just a peaked level. Uh, it's not audio. It's just DC. You've probably all heard of DC offset. It's, it's in that realm of technology. 